One for another is here pushed to the extreme without a return to the self to the point where anarchy undermines the archae that is being. It is an anarchy that puts an end to the game of ontology in which being loses and discovers itself, writes Levinas. For Levinas, proximity and obsession are not phenomena of the consciousness, but this non-consciousness, instead of being the sign of a deficit of some sort, is an affirmation of their exception from totality. That is the refusal of manifestation, and this exception is non-being or anarchy prior to the still ontological alternative of being and nothingness. But the subject, as an elected subject, as a substitution, ex as a substitution exper experiences a stunning reversal, alienation is now seen as the withdrawal into a being that perseveres in, in its being. While freedom is to be found on the side of substitution. I quote, a mode of freedom, ontological impossible, breaks the unrandable essence. Substitution frees the subject from ennui, that is, from the enchaînement to the itself, where the ego suffocates in itself. The unique quality of this liberation is that it does not fall into the game of ontology, but consists of beginning action, perseverance in being. Yet Levinas writes and thus creates a new and paradoxical image of linearity, anarchic liberation, it emerges without being assumed, without turning into a beginning in inequality with oneself. On many occasions, Levinas defines anarchy as a disturbance. A disturbance of the time of the clocks, of historic time, of historical time, and of being. Does this mean that because of this disturbance, we can identify without qualifying anarchy with disorder, not at all, it would seem. For in his description of obsession, the anarchic movement in the original sense of the term, Levinas states that anarchy is not the fact of a disorder opposed to an order, especially since disorder is, in <coughs> truth, another form of order. It is important to point out that this is not an affirmation an affirmation of order or of the omnipresence of order. Rather, Levinas is attempting to preserve a, maxim, a maximal, even emphatic conception of anarchy. Anarchy is beyond the ontological alternative between order and disorder, but is still under the hold of being anarchy. Indeed, anarchy troubles being over and beyond these alternatives. It is because anarchy, an anarchy of obsession as a non-intentional enigma troubles being, that is to <coughs> say puts an end to the ontological game, that we cannot reduce it to a disorder that opposes order. The more complex movement occurs if anarchy cannot be reduced to a disorder, in an, on, in an ontological sense, it seems that a disorder subtracted from ontology, conceived in a non-dialectical manner, and beyond its opposition to order, could receive an anarchic force. In other words, a disorder that has to do with an outside and that stays away from which phases can be conceivable. In this sense, Levinas concludes the not free <coughs> uh, by recognizing the virtues of a sort of meta-ontological disorder. Disorder, I quote, has an irreducible meaning 
as a refusal of synthesis. <coughs> if the anarchy cannot be reduced to a disorder, but it, it is opposed to an order, then conversely, some disorder to the extent that they are disturbance of being or that they undermine being archaic have to do with anarchy. Now the second part, the disturbance of politics. To come back to the question of departure, anarchy between politics and politics, in the trajectory that we have just taken, whether it to be proximity, responsibility for the other, substitution or obsession, we have been constantly directed towards and underneath of freedom, a pre-original, pre-historical and immemorial underneath of the archive. In short, we have explored what one could call the dimension of the underneath, and amongst others, the underneath of politics that is found in, on the side of free action, beginning principle, being and archive thus on the side of ontology. If we turn, however, to the meta, that is to say, if we turn away from politics, if we take leave of politics and turn to something else, if we turn towards metapolitics, what do we find? Perhaps ethics, without which we know that politics <coughs> would be tyranny. Ethics that is related to infinity and to the glory of infinity. Is this answer satisfactory? To resume this movement and to embrace it, it seems then that anarchy is to be found either on the side of an underneath or on the side of a beyond, or perhaps on the passage that goes from an underneath to a beyond. Levinas speaks of an ambiguous of anarchy in the sense of a self anachronism late with regard to its present, unable to make up for its lateness. This is a persecuted self, unable to think through that what affects him. The self can, however, set this unenableness for anarchy, leaves a trace, yet it is only a trace that speech can attempt to say. However, regarding anarchy, would its ambiguity not be if that it finds itself between a source and a term, between an underneath that is coming and a beyond that is going? Is it not as, as, if, were, as if there was a direct communication between this prehistorical and anarchic trace and proximity of the responsibility for the other? one for the other, irreducibly anarchy. Nevertheless, to follow, <coughs> to follow such a road does anarchy not, in these complex trajectories, leave aside politics, since it is well and core in its tranquility, in its self-consciousness, and in its equality of self to self. Is this to say that anarchy takes itself from politics but remains under the hold of ontology, logos, anarchy? This is not at all the case. Anarchy disturbs politics to the point where we can speak of a disturbance of politics. Admittedly, anarchy does not reign. It cannot be sovereign like an archaic, and it cannot be stated as a principle without contradiction it's contradicting itself. Hence, the anarchist insurmountable contradiction that will put anarchy in power, or that will break power as domination in the name of principle of reason over authority. In short, to follow the anarchist project, anarchy will reign. Hence, also, the aporia of the anarchy principle that maintains even while rejecting the classical metaphysics derivation of action, the reference to an arche that is no, no less than being, being arche, writes Levinas. To separate anarchy from sovereignty, to separate it from a principle, does not mean 
but anarchy does not affect politics or leaves it unchanged by abandoning it to its own determinism. To begin with, in order to better appreciate the disturbance of politics, we should perhaps confront it with what I have called in another text, the extravagant hypothesis. It is the hypothesis that Levinas proposed to explain the origin of the state. For Levinas, the state, far from proceeding from the limitation of violence and from the limitation of the excess of the war of all against all, ensues from proximity, from the human intrigue of responsibility of the other in the sense that the state is a limitation of the infinity that affects the ethical relationship. Hence, a legitimate question, what is the relationship between the Levinasian hypothesis and anarchy? Without envisaging the question as a whole, it clearly appears that what Levinas thinks on the side of anarchy proximity, responsibility for the other, substitution, is that nourishes the extravagant hypothesis. The establishment of the state corresponds to the limitation of this pre-original and anarchic entry. The state is born of a limitation of a pre-original anarchy in the Levinasian sense of the term, that is, limitation under the category of justice. It is without a doubt that this relationship to anarchy creates a disturbance of politics and provokes the disturbance of politics. For even if justice, with a sudden appearance of a third party, imposes its 